Welcome to another weekend with Where Josie Goes. Together with you, I'm going to be exploring South Africa and checking off all the hidden gems off that list. This weekend brings us to a spot just outside of Hermanus, the beautiful Benguela Cove, where the focus is on biodiversity, incredible views, an amazing property, and apparently they have a food and wine experience like no other. This is no ordinary estate as Benguela Cove is a working wine farm and olive grove, as well as being a residential community. The estate offers water sports and a host of outdoor activities to its residents, and the manor house welcomes visitors to enjoy the magnificent views, ambiance, and great food and wine. So Penny and Nick, there's a great story about how this place came to be. Tell us a little bit about it. We acquired Benguela Cove in 2013. Um, we were homeowners on the estate and we were lucky enough to, when the opportunity came up to buy the whole estate, we purchased it outright and became the developer on, on Benguela Cove. We're continuing with the developing of properties. We're selling on here 124 luxury urban. And on top of that, we're also developing a very cool um, destination for tourism, for wine tourism. So we've, we've got a whole load of exciting things in the bag coming through. You've got an incredible art collection here and I was blown away by that straight in front of Mabba piece as you walk in. I love art, so all of our Benguela collection properties have a lot of art in. I particularly love Lionel Schmitz and some of the other South African artists. People say to me they're a bit sort of off the wall at times. I mean, certainly these aren't particularly naked, but we have got some very sort of strange ones. <laughs> but I think it's nice, it's eclectic, it's different, and it gives a nice vibe to the place. The Manor House is in fact Nick and Penny's luxurious home. They've generously opened up to the public to be used as a restaurant until construction on the new building is completed. Unfortunately, accommodation isn't yet available on this state, but the future plans are exciting. Nick, this is going to be quite the summer hotspot, and you guys are doing something a little bit different, incorporating the use of the dam. Tell us more. We're very fortunate that Bengola Cove is on this wonderful lagoon, which is enclosed from the sea. It's actually quite warm and we're, uh, we've just built a large pontoon boat uh, with seating, with a bar, and we'll be doing wine tasting on the lagoon. The lagoon and mountains are quite the attraction, but another exciting way to enjoy this magical place is a vineyard to glass tour, where visitors get a sneak peek at the farming activities and taste the wines grown on the estate. So it's no secret that I'm a big lover of wine, and Pinot Noir is actually my favorite. Johannes informed me that this area of the Walker Bay is unbelievable for Pinot Noir because it's only three kilometers away from the ocean. Extra magic in the making and I can't wait to try. The vineyards cover 70 hectares of the estate and produce award-winning red and white wines. The unique, slightly windy conditions and the close proximity to the sea increases the quality of the grapes produced here and the estate prides itself on maintaining its biodiversity and making use of sustainable farming practices. So this is obviously a very unique spot and it lends itself perfectly to a certain type of terroir. What are the different varietals that you farm here on the property? Yeah, so we've planted uh, 70 hectares of vines, of which we've planted eight red wine varietals and five white wine grape varietals. Being new to this property, this is virgin soils for, for vineyards. We were taking a bit of an experimental approach by planting little bits of, of everything and just eventually learning what would be best suited to this region. And then from the wines to the wildlife, that's also a very unique thing to this area. Tell us a bit about what animals we can find here on the property. Yes, we have a multitude of animals on the farm. You're looking at rodents, you're looking at porcupines, you're looking at small antelope. We've created an area for them to all survive. And in terms of boosting the ecosystem and assisting with that, how do you guys get involved with the circle of life here on the property? Yes, our farm has been accredited. We only spray the minimum amount of pesticides required on the farm. We also promote the biodiversity amongst all of the rodents, the birds. We've created living situations for all of them within our farm. What better way to enjoy the fruits of the soil on the property than with the food from the fabulous seasonal pop-up restaurant at the Manor House, run by Chef Annie Bardenhorst. Chef Bardenhorst, this looks incredible. Thank you so much. What are we eating today? We have a 63 degree egg yolk, cauliflower soil, pancetta and kale, pawpaw, celery, radish salad with garlic emulsion, home cured brisket with pickled onions and fresh apples. Incredible, thank you so much. It looks amazing. Guests at the Papa restaurant can enjoy either a two or three course meal, which is carefully paired by the on-site sommelier. 
As we know, every good meal should have a decadent dessert, so it's a short trip down to the coast to Betty's Bay to visit the Gobeli Chocolate Factory with its very own Willy Wonka, Belgian chocolatier Gaspard Bassou, who makes some of the most delicious truffles this side of the Overberg. Well, I'm certainly a big chocolate fan, and right here in Betty's Bay is Gaspard, who's got his own brand of chocolate. Gaspard, hello, thank you very Hi. much for having Hi. me. Welcome, welcome, I believe welcome. you're going to teach me all about making chocolate, I fine mean, chocolates today. I've been waiting for you. I need somebody to come and help me make some chocolate. Tell us a little bit about the great story behind this. It's been going for a number of years, right? And it's, uh, you know, me and me alone doing the chocolates on days that end with a Y. I only work on days that end with a Y. You know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, today, and Sunday, right? And so we carry on as such, right? And uh, being Belgian, I've always been interested in it and so on, you know. And, uh, you know, it keeps me busy, you know, being semi or three quarter retired or so, and full time into the chocolate business, which is quite enjoyable. And in terms of ranges, what do you have on offer? These are the basic tasters here. White right? milk, the 55, the 70, and 100%. Awesome. And uh, maybe you'd like a little taste here. Yeah, chat and me you through go that. Over. What am I tasting? Go through the, the white. Yeah. White chocolate, three major ingredients, right? That's uh, sugar, cocoa butter, and milk, milk powder. That's it. Obviously, vanilla, real vanilla into mm. it, right? Then, when, after the, the bean has been crushed, right, there's obviously a cocoa mass which comes into it. Right? So, we take some of the mass into this, into the white one here, and we end up uh, with a, a milk chocolate. Now, the dark one is a, long, a very interesting story with it, right? And uh, what we've done is this one here, right? The milk. We've taken the milk out of it, the lactose, in other words, right? And we end up with a dark. Amazing. This is a 55%. And uh, to make it a bit better, you know, we've taken. Uh, some more sugar out of it, more of the, 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 the cocoa mass into it, right? And we end up with the 70%. But I've got one better, one above that, you know. I've got 100%. And this is real, this is serious stuff. You must take a try, but have a small little bit. And Better. then, you know, this is the way it just about comes off the tree. But, you know, it's pure chocolate. Mm, and no sugar added whatsoever? Zero, 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 zero. The one thing you, did, you must also do is take a bit of uh, the chocolate here and mm. put it here, there must have been nothing to work with. Okay. Gaspard makes some truly interesting truffles, from beer infused to feinbos and even blue cheese and biltong flavours. But he's also created diabetic friendly versions of his treats for everyone to enjoy. Oh, I think this is my best one yet. Oh, nice. This was absolutely fantastic. Well done, you know, as we say in Belgium, chapeau and here's a chapeau. Oh, I've my Top, hat. Uh, there <laughs> we go. Beautifully done. Fantastic. Well awesome. done. Oh my goodness, it tastes so much better when it's your own. All that love has gone into it. Thank you for an incredible lesson. I'll not, definitely be back. It was great. After being surrounded by liters of chocolate, it's time to wind down the day in elegance back at the manor house. For a dessert with a difference and that'll make you feel like you're in the lap of luxury, the millionaire's tasting is an experience that's big on flavors, but doesn't cost a fortune. This is picture-worthy stuff, and what an incredible way to end the day. This is called the Millionaire's Tasting for a reason. This is dessert or sweet wine at its finest. So we've got two different types here. One is a natural sweet, where the base is a viognier, which a cheat sheet is peaches and cream wines. So you should get peaches on your palate and, and on the nose. And the other one is a noble late harvest, which is from the base of Sauvignon Blanc. So if you're anything like me and you like to end the day on a sweet note, this is the ultimate way to do it. Millionaire shortbread and a beautiful dessert or sweet wine. Cheers to another incredible adventure in South Africa. Follow the journey as always on hashtag where Josie goes and hashtag the weekend edition.